had the honor Lord, I lift our hands in worship As we lift your holy name You deserve the glory Oh, and the honor Lord, we lift our hands in worship As we lift your holy name You are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you You are great You do miracles so great There is no one else like you There is no one else like you You deserve the glory And the honor Oh yes Lord We lift our hands in worship As we lift your holy name
Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, Lord, you're my provider, and Jehovah needs me, Lord, you reign in victory, Jehovah Shalom, you're my Prince of Peace, and I worship you because of who you are, I worship you. Let your glory fill this house, oh Lord, let your praises fill my life, let each vessel offer unto you a sacrifice of praise. Oh, 
Feel a holy hush that's really literally coming across this room right now. The only way I can describe it is when you drive around and you see in the clouds or way down, it almost looks like they're going to touch the ground. I see a cloud of His glory literally in this place right now. And you that are watching, just offer up your heart, look up. There's a cloud of His glory that's resting. And you know something about a cloud, when it rests there, it provides shade and, and comfort, and it protects. The comforter, the protector is here for you. The comforter, the protector is here for you. The comforter, the protector is here for you. I believe that's a word for somebody. The comforter and the helper is here for you the redeemer he is here protecting he's hovering over you the holy spirit is and saying come unto me all you that are weary and heavy laden i will give you rest i will take your yoke from you and take what i have to give to you learn from it and lean upon it because it's not heavy it's light I put that upon you now and I hover over you in the spirit. Oh, the glory of the Lord is here. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. <laughs> holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels just bow the redeemed worship you now holy 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 are you Lord and I believe that this is a song the Lord just sing them over us just turn your eyes upon me says the Lord just turn your eyes upon me I believe this morning the Lord's saying just give it all to me and my rest I'll give to thee come to me and lead on me Rest in my presence, for I'm your God, and I've come to bring you peace. For the Lord says, come to me, all who are weary, <laughs> isn't that great? The Lord says, come to me. 
and I'll give you rest. This morning I say, come to me, my peace I'll give to thee, come and rest at my feet. Oh, thank you, Lord. Would you give him praise for his word, for his promise? Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord.
just, come on, let's give him another shout of praise. Hallelujah. Oh, that's one of my favorite songs. I love singing about the goodness of God, don't you? Well, turn around and look at someone and say, it's good to see you here in church today. Amen. And you that is joining us online, wherever you're joining from, we welcome you and all of you from Kenya that's watching this morning. I've noticed on our stream that uh, new countries are just coming on, and I have no clue of how people know how to watch us in these different places, but we're just grateful that we have as many people live with us this morning and those that's watching later, or um, maybe six months later, who knows? But anyway, God's Word is true, and, and when the anointing goes forth, when it's preached, even if you see it or hear it or watch it later, the same anointing is there. And that's what, you know, I remember the old reel-to-reel tapes. Some of you don't know what those are. But the reel-to-reel tapes, you know, we used to have them before we did video. And, um, and then, then we uh, went into cassettes and then from cassettes to CDs. And now it's just a little thing you plug in your computer. But anyway, no matter what you watch it on, whether it's on TV or whatever. And, and you know, if you go to YouTube and you watch someone and you look, and that was done three years ago, it's just as fresh today when it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost as it is right now. Amen. So let's, uh, let's just go to prayer and ask God to minister here today and, and meet the needs. Father, I thank you that you're a God that's real. You're a God that's more than enough. And Lord, there's days we walk by faith because we're, we have circumstances and issues that life has given us. So that's the only thing we can do because we don't want to give up and we have nothing to give up to and go back. So we're grateful for your goodness today. We're grateful for your mercy today. And I thank you. I thank you for being present with us here in this room and those that would be watching with us somewhere in the world. Touch those that are having a hard time physically today. Just touch their bodies. Touch their bodies and make them well. Make them whole. Those that's recovering, God, just bring them into a quick recovery. Lord, I thank you that you're here today with us. So let your anointing come forth as I speak your words today and bless every person. Let something be said the way you would want it to be said so it would minister to the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Well, thank you, Jesus. Amen. amen. Well, just give him another hand clap of praise, would you? Praise the Lord. Well, you know, I've, I've really prayed and thought about this. I thought, you know, last week I kn knew I didn't near finish by talking about being real and authentic. And so I thought I'd just go back to that today because I think that's something that we all struggle with sometimes. And it's not just, it's not just a, a person that's having a problem I mean, you, you, you could just be going through something and, and you don't want anybody to know. And I'm saying that you don't have to tell everybody everything that's going on because that wouldn't be wise to begin with. But every now and then, I think it is good, as I've been saying, I will say here, to have someone that you trust, that you know that has, uh, well, the term would be good, that you know that's got your back. You know, some people tell you they got your, your back, but they're so far behind you don't know where they are. <laughs> they're so far behind you, they never show up, you know, when you need them. And so, uh, you know, I know one lady come in here and she told us she'd been here about three weeks. She said, boy, Pastor, God sent me here to be your back. I said, oh, oh great, wonderful. I said, we, we need people to, to stand up and hold us up in prayer and pray with her. Well, three weeks later, she was gone. And uh, I thought, well, 
I guess I need to gold, hold gold be her back. So anyway, we can say lots of things, but what we say sometimes does not match what we do. And that's why I come back to this series this morning is be, be who you are. Be real. Let's not be uh, someone or try to pretend to someone that we're something we're not. So this morning I want to go back and, and talk about that. And, and, you know, being real and authentic, I believe, will determine the quality of your life. Because if you're always pretending, in some ways, you know, you're lying. And God doesn't want us lying. God wants us to tell the truth, you know. And as I said, you don't have to tell everybody everything. But at the same time, you need to use discretion about uh, how you are, how you're doing spiritually, emotionally, physically, and financially. You know, when, when sometimes I don't tell her everything I feel. I mean, you know, sometimes she doesn't want to know what I feel. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, and uh, and I know it's the same with her. And and you know, I can. Uh, she she she's not one to complain. And 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 you know, when she gave birth to our four children, of course, this was all before. They allowed the husband to accompany them, um, our children, when they were born, uh, and I was not in there, but uh, I was told by the doctor, your wife never made one scream. She never said one word. All she did was made a face and grunted and, and uh, uh, endured the pain and brought those children out, and she said, "I've never seen anybody like that." Well, you know that's the way she she just pain tolerant. Some of us are not. Some of us squeal at the least little thing, you know. <laughs> but I can see on her face sometimes when something's going on. She may not say it, but her her body language tells me. So I want people to understand when when you're when you're pretending, sometimes your body language says much more than your words do. So it's important that we don't try to pretend. Now, when you live a godly life, you will really do your best to be authentic in every area of your life because you want to represent Jesus Christ in the right way. And when you get up and look in the mirror every morning, you want to be with the pleased with the person that's looking back at you. Yeah. Amen? You know, when I look in the mirror, I don't get up and, and begin to tell myself lies. Now, sometimes I don't feel like... Uh, confessing and saying to myself, but I, I say, Don Clowers, you're, you're, you're getting up today. You're not going to stay down. You're not going to, you're not going to be, um, you know, you're not going to be sad. You're not going <laughs> to let all this happen to you, but you're going to rejoice because that's what the Bible says. Well, sometimes I have to talk to myself to get myself up. Any of you ever have to talk to yourself? Because sometimes the coffee doesn't do it. And sometimes I've prayed, and that doesn't do it. And sometimes I've read my scriptures, and that doesn't do it. So sometimes when I'm looking there, I'll say, you get your act together, boy. You got a day that you got to go and bless some people and be a help to somebody. Can you say amen? amen. See, you can only do, you can only do that if you're honest with yourself. You can only look into the mirror and, and do this if you're honest with yourself and being a person of godly character. And you have an opportunity every single day to decide how you're going to live your life. I want to say that again. Every day you have an opportunity to decide how you're going to live your life. Now, if you're not feeling good, obviously you're not feeling good. And that doesn't mean if you're not feeling good. You know, somebody sent me a text um, uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and they said, well, I'm not feeling well, and I won't be at church today. Well, that's being honest. Mm -hmm. That's being real. Amen? Yeah. So um, what God wants from us is, is to, when you're feeling bad, is not act like we're not, but be honest about it. And, and get through the day, if you're feeling physically down, 
Get through the day quoting scriptures, doing the best you can, rather than saying, I don't know why I'm going through all of this. I don't know why this is happening. God, i have give my tithe. i give my offer. No, just don't get into all of that. Just put your head up and say, God, I'm going on. I'm going on. Amen? Amen. See, be completely honest with yourself. See, you can't be honest with other people unless you're honest with yourself. And that, that others always fa- feel safe being around you. And see, that's one thing I have really realized in my life and why when God told me to downsize my ministry or I felt like it was God's will telling me to downsize my ministry, I didn't want to tell people or pretend to them something else. I just wanted to be like it is, but I want people to feel, hey, I'm genuine, I'm real, just like you. And I want people to feel, uh, you can be yourself. You don't have to put on a front. And I'm going to love you, whoever you are, or however you are, or or whatever you've done, I'm going to love you. Amen? Amen. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. See, as as Christians, what I think is, is really important is being authentic then we reveal, reveal Christ to others when we're around them. But if we're not authentic, we're not representing Christ. We're representing something false to them, and I want to do the right thing. And see, authentic is, authentic, as I said last week, we'll just go over it again because I'm sure you didn't remember it all, but it's not false or copied. It's genuine. Real, representing one's true nature to oneself and to others. And then it says authenticity requires vulnerability. Now, this is where a lot of people have a hard time. This is where a lot of ministers have a lot of time. Hard time is being vulnerable and, and with their congregation. But, you know, I... I you know, Joyce Meyer is our friend, and, and I think most of you know that, and we've spent a lot of time with Joyce over the years, and one thing I think that has been the success of Joyce Meyer's ministry, she's just been vulnerable and told people what's going on in her life, and she's been authentic, and she's not tried to hide the fact of, you know, uh, when she's having a hard time, she tells people she's having a hard time, and so I, I've always appreciated that style of ministry rather than pretending that I don't go through anything because we all go through it. But vulnerability is, is one of the things that I think that we all need to learn in transparency. And, and again, when we use these words, we need to know where we're being transparent because when we, we're in the right place, we're in the right people when we're transparent. And Integrity, authentic, authenticity will not compromise for approval. And how many people do want approval and always do all kinds of things to get approval? Some people will give money they don't have to try and impress somebody. You know, I, I, I've been to pastors' conferences and I've watched other pastors uh, sometimes give money to get the approval, thinking they're going to get the approval of the man or woman that's speaking. And so they're not being real. They're trying to buy a relationship. Folks, you can buy one, but when you quit giving the money, what you got? You don't have relationship. You only had an exchange of money. So I, I'm, I'm saying that that. You know, authenticity goes in so many areas, and I've watched people over the years trying to impress others to get their friendship. But, you know, if you do, you're not really knowing the right person. You know, so many people want to create an image. So many people want to create an image. And, and um, I don't want to, you know, I know a lady I know a lady that that um, she she got engaged to this uh, person and they had a lot of exposure and 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 you know it, it, it was he just had a lot of exposure 
And, and a lot of people knew him, and a lot of people liked him and everything. Well, this lady and he, um, you know, he sincerely, they, they, I thought they was falling in love. But anyway, uh, she fell in love with the image of what she saw rather than who he was. Now, am I making myself clear about authenticity? See, how many times do we we around people and this person thinks you're somebody else because that's the front that you're putting on in front of them. But when they got married, she found out, this is not the guy that I thought. This is the image. She married the image. It wasn't that he was a bad or wrong or treated her less. It was, hey, you, you, you go to the bathroom too. <laughs> You need a bath too. You snore too. Huh? So, you know, she thought she was marrying somebody that didn't, didn't have all those things, you know. But I'm telling you, folks, you, you say, now, now I'm sure she, they, they thought different, but I'm trying to make my point clear. How many times have people married an image because the person, all, they created the person they wanted them to be in their mind? See, she created the person she wanted him to be, and he's just being who he was. I mean, I mean, you can't be around him very long. I know him. You can't be a very, around him very long without knowing it. And finally, she just said, I don't want you anymore. And so, uh, you know, kind of kind of put the brakes on that. So uh, th- that's why I'm saying be real in the beginning. You know, another couple of years ago, I used to do a lot of marriage counseling, but I don't do that anymore because it's hard to find authenticity. It's hard to find two people being honest uh, because usually when you're doing marriage, ca- or I used to do pre-marriage counseling, and uh, and I was pretty good in it, and, and I don't say any, to tell anybody anything about it, but I actually got an earned PhD in uh, human behavior. I mean, I don't talk about that. It doesn't, doesn't do me any good to put doctor on my name. You know, it, it doesn't help anything. It doesn't, imp- I don't need to impress you right. with my credentials. I mean, they're on the wall out there, uh, yeah. the bachelor's degree, the master's degree, but <laughs> It's just out there. You know, i got to put it somewhere. I can hide it, one or the others. It, it's just not important for me to get up and call myself Dr. Don Clowers. <laughs> I mean, it's okay. It's okay if people do that. I, I mean, I, I see it, and I'm not criticizing. Please, nobody think. I'm just saying that doctor doesn't make me. That's right. Amen? Amen? I'm who I am. Yeah. And I don't like to impress people. And I, I, I don't want to be an image to somebody. You know, uh, uh, while I'm talking about this and before I finish this, let me say this. Joyce Meyer and, and Dave and, and Sharon, Pastor Sharon and I, we were shopping in this mall this week. And uh, as we were shopping, and what we normally do, we meet together after Christmas, and, and uh, they buy us the Christmas present, and we buy them one, because I'm a person, I'm a person, I don't like to buy you what I think you want, I like to buy you what you want. See, how many times has somebody brought you a gift and you smile real big and you said, oh, this is so nice and you just lying through your teeth. You know you won't like it and you won't wear it and you won't use it, but you just wanting to put on that front. Well, you know, uh, anyway, we were, we, we were shopping and this lady looked up and she said, oh, you're Joyce Meyer. And Joyce is always nice when she's recognized, and that happens every time uh, we're out together. And she said, oh, yes, I am. And the lady looked at her, and she said, what in the world are you doing here in the mall? What are you in the world are you doing here? Joyce said, same thing you're doing. Oh, you shop too? Yeah, Joyce said, well, I don't live on the, on the television. I live... And then I do television. The lady said, oh. Oh. Oh, oh, can I have a selfie? So they did a selfie, and then we walked into another store and where I was looking around. And I just happened, and Dave and Joyce was somewhere, and Joyce started talking to the, to the, the person, the manager, whoever it was, 
And anyway, there was a couple of ladies standing beside, and I just happened to get my attention. And one was on the phone talking, the other one was looking, and she saw Joyce. So she took the lady, and she just turned her around <laughs> and pointed because Joyce couldn't see her pointing, but I did, you know. Uh, uh, it's amazing that people have image. Yeah. Joyce is just Joyce. Yeah. Don is just Don. Cheering is just cheering. So why don't we realize, you know, uh, uh, what we do and who we are are separate. And I've often said this, my identity is not in what I do. My identity is who I am and who I am. And so when I, I realize that, I don't have to put on. I don't have to put on. I'm just real. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, we celebrated, we got to celebrate Dave and Joyce. It was their, their 55th anniversary. And so we got to celebrate with them on the day of their 55th anniversary. And so we had a good time shopping and talking. And we were sharing back and forth about the beginnings. And she, Dave showed a picture of their, their wedding and stuff, you know. But again, uh, when I got, when we got married, I was telling Joyce how it was when we got married, you know, that, I was just a redneck, and Sharon was this sophisticated lady from Canada uh, that was just total, total opposites in many ways. But you know what? We began to blend. She began to get some of the redneck out of me, and I began to get some of Canada out of her. After she hung around me for a long time, you know, and all of us Southerners, you know, because we got our own language, especially the rednecks. Anyway, uh, again, I was saying about approval, authenticity doesn't need the approval of others because you know who you are. You can never be free until you're living in authenticity. Authenticity is revealed by your godly actions, deeds, and uh, it, it brings contentment. It does not mask who you are. It reveals who you are. Now, I read last week in Romans chapter 12, verses through through 5 and then 9, and it says, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you're better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves and measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. Now, I read this last week, but I just want to come back and say that many times, we don't value ourselves enough. People have low self-esteem because they don't know who they really are. And when they don't know who they are, they get around this person and they act like them a little bit. And they get around this person, they start acting like them a little bit. And they just pick up here and there. Um, I, I don't remember who it was. Uh, or it was Kenneth Copeland. I, I was listening to Kenneth Copeland the other day. And Kenneth Copeland said, you know, and I do know things will rub off on you, and you're not, uh, you're not imitating. They just get to become a part of you. And Kenneth said that for a while, somebody said to him, said, well, you sound just like Kenneth Hagin. He said, I wasn't trying to sound like Kenneth Hagin. But he said, uh, I was around him so much, and I heard his preaching, and I had his cassettes on almost 24 hours a day listening to him, so he just got inside of me. Well, that's the way it was when with me with uh, A.A. A. Allen when I grew up. I listened to A.A. A. Allen so much and so forth. I never tried to emulate him. I never tried to be like him because I certainly couldn't talk like him. He had a deep voice and he was so eloquent and he was such a great speaker and profound and he didn't stutter. I mean, he, you know, sometimes I stutter, but sometimes he just. I mean, he was so profound in what he had to say. So I, I never wanted to, to try and emulate anybody. I just want to be real. Yes. Amen? Amen? So sometimes we start thinking, you know, uh, what will they think of me? What will they think of me? You know, I got to go uh, speak a, a couple of days this week out of town. And... Um, um, and, you know, when, when you go out, and I'm going to a place and into a group of people that know me, but I don't, I don't remember or know, I, I might have met some of them 40 or 
40 years ago or so, but most of them I don't know. But when I go in, I don't feel like I gotta, I gotta impress anybody. It's a pastor's conference. I'm going to be speaking in Oklahoma. And I, I just, somebody called me up and said, you going to that conference? And I said, yes. And they said, well, you know, these people are different. I said, well, they're people. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. I don't know what's different about them. I don't have any, any as I said, some of them, some of them's younger. And uh, uh, actually, the, the pastor that, that's putting it on and that invited me, he said, I knew you when I was a little boy. I knew you when I was a little boy, and it's the first, uh, first connection that we're going to have together. He said, I watch you on the Internet, but he said, uh, this is the first connection that we're going to have personally since I was a little boy. Well, you know, uh, I, I'm not going to go in there and try to act like I did 50 years ago or 40 years ago, whatever it was, I guess 40 years ago. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go in and be myself. Yeah. Amen. 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 Somebody say, thank you, thank you, Jesus. That little side Side trip didn't cost y'all a thing. <laughs> that was free. Amen. You know, verse 9, I want to read verse 9 in the Passion Bible. I, I read this last week, but I want to close th- this part of the reading now, where it says, Let the inner movement of your heart always be love one another, always be to love one another, and never play the role of an actor Wearing a mask. Now, I read this last week, but I wanted you to see it this week. Despise evil and embrace everything that is good and virtuous. You know, I have a hard time embracing something that's not good and virtuous. You know, as I said, we accept people as they are, we want them to accept us as they are, as we are. So this is why it's so important that we be authentic in who we are. How many Christians want to pretend they're they're someone that's on a real spiritual thing and they're afraid to tell somebody that they have flaws. Well, I told you last week, I have flaws. I'm a real person. I'm a human. I make mistakes. But I pray and ask God to give me wisdom. You know, I said last week that I know many scriptures in the Bible and I teach from these scriptures and I believe them. But just because that I I said this, and it bears repeating because I want you to really get it, Just because you are a Christian, because you are authentic, doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. You know, sometimes stuff stops along our way that we can't help. Amen? Amen. I mean, when COVID stopped at our house and my body, I I did everything in the world I knew to prevent it, but it came anyway. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, I, I got a friend that's in the hospital right now. Uh, that I knew when I was uh, uh, 15 years of age, and this person's in the hospital, has been vaccinated with all the vaccinations, and it, they, they say they don't know that whether she, she's got COVID, and they, they say they don't know if she's going to live through the day or not. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? I'm, what I'm saying is stuff stops at our house, yeah. at our bodies that we didn't ask for. Yeah. Somebody told me the other day, said I, I got diagnosed of this and, and is a problem in my lungs and they said I didn't know I had that well see this is what I'm saying is stuff happens to us in life and people think because we're Christians things don't happen to us God just gives us the grace to walk through it amen, amen. amen. God gives us the grace to walk through it yes. amen? amen so let, let this year be the year that you decide that you're going to be real. In 22, decide that you're going to be real. Don't be the person at home, uh, and then when you go to church, pretend to others that you got it all together and that you have no problems. You know, again, let me go give you another example. Uh, you know, 
I, I, when I was getting started in the ministry, I, hadn't, I didn't finish my school, so I had to go back and do it later after we got married to finish all my school and, and to get my degrees and things. And now remember, before I met her, my, 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 my mom and dad had moved to Florida, and so I wasn't attending school, and I was in the ministry, but I didn't have any, mini- but I didn't have any place to minister, so I got a job where my dad worked. And, uh, you know, my dad was just an everyday guy. He was a welder. He was a great welder. Made good money for welders. But anyway, we were working there one day, and the boss was gone. And so I was over there sitting down. Dad said, what are you doing? I said, I'm sitting down. What does it look like? He said, well, get your st- up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I said, well, you're my daddy. But you're not my boss here. He said, I'm your boss wherever you are. <laughs> Until you get out from under my roof, you're, 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 I'm your boss. And uh, anyway, I, I said, well, Dad, I don't know nothing wrong. He said, don't you know the boss is smart enough to know what you've been doing when he gets back? He gave you a job. He gave you an assignment. And he knows how long it takes to do that assignment. Yeah. So when he comes back, don't you know he's going to be knowing you've been sitting on your... <clears throat> yeah. and, and I said, well, no, he won't know that. I said, because he, he, you know, but I was young. And I was trying to pretend, I wanted to pretend I was working, but I wanted to sit down. Dad said, no, this doesn't get the job done. And how many other people at work bide their time until the clock says it's time to go home before they, you know, they're just pretending to work. They're pretending to do the job. And, you know, th- this causes productivity to be less. God wants us to be productive. So if you're not authentic, if you're not real, you won't be productive. You won't be, you won't be productive. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. You know, as I, I, I brought you a lot of scriptures that we all confess and that we all speak over. And I, I, I still speak over them. You know, uh, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power love and a sound mind. Now, you can say that. I can say that. But if you're fearful, you're fearful. Amen. Amen. Some of you may look at me and say, well, Pastor, well, I'm not saying to say I'm fearful. Confess what the Word of God says. But if you're fearful and you're having a hard time, you need some help. Amen. 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 See, I can give you all these scriptures, and many of them you can quote them too. You can confess them over and over again. However, if it's not working, if it's not working, what do you do? See, if it's not working, this is what I'm trying to show you, is God wants us to have something working in our life and us always progressing but if it's not working, it doesn't mean the Bible's not true. doesn't mean we get mad at God. doesn't mean we give up. doesn't mean that God doesn't love us. But what do we have to do? We have to stand in faith. Amen. Now, I believe faith. I believe, Cheryl, you stay with me because I'm skipping. <laughs> I believe faith is walking through things. See, as I said, I believe it was last week or sometimes, you know, we, we think faith is, is getting a new home or a new car or a new job. And it is all of those things. But I believe faith is walking through things. Sometimes we don't get delivered from the fire. We walk through the fire. And it takes as much faith to walk through the fire as it does to get delivered from the fire. And you know, much of our life, much is much of our life is walking through the fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now you tell me everything's all right. Whether everyone, you you tell me everything's perfect in your life right now. Mm-hmm. Who wants to come up here and get the microphone and tell me how perfect everything is in your life? Well. How many of you is walking through some faith right now? You've got some faith right now that you're faith in things because it is what it is. You know, somebody was telling me before church started today about 
what's going on in their business and it is what it is. Well, when it is what it is, why try to make it something it isn't? Is anyone here with me today? Now, I do know that all of our makeups are different. For some, just believing and quoting the scriptures is not enough. Sometimes you need somebody just come along and walk beside you and hold your hand. Amen? Amen. As I said earlier, and I didn't finish it, sometimes I (laughs) counsel with people, pre-marriage and and marriage counseling, but sometimes people would come in and they wouldn't be real. And and, and they, they wanted to be a place to tell on the person, not themselves. Oh, how many times have I gone through that? I mean, I, I, I don't even know the times I've gone through it that come in for counseling. Well, he, she does this, and she does that, and she does this, and he does this, and he does this, and he does this. So I turn around and I say, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I do this because he does that, or I do this because, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. And then I remember this couple, I was doing some pre-marriage counseling, and you know what? I got forms to fill out, or I did, and I, I mean, I had, I thought, one of the best setups in pre-marriage counseling to stop people from lying and deceiving <laughs> one another, you know, but, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> no matter what you do, if you're not authentic, it's, you're going to hide it, yeah. and I mean, I, it, this, this form, and, and what happens is, you take the form home and you fill it out yourself and the person you're going to get married to doesn't see this and the same happens on the other and then they bring them to me and I read them and they don't show them to each other uh, but I see them first and then I go through and I read them and I look at them and, and so I went through this whole process and this gentleman, he, he just he pulled the wool over my eyes he pulled the wool over her eyes. I mean, uh, I don't even know why people want to get married when they're not themselves. Right. <laughs> Amen. Why do you want to marry somebody that doesn't know you? Uh oh, I'm 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 getting too far away here. I guess. But I'm serious. I'm talking about life. People do this. I spent. Eight weeks with this couple. One, one, be more than about two hours a week. So I spent sixteen hours with this couple, or more, maybe twenty. And we would go over these issues. And when we go over this issue, he would sit there and he would just lie. He just lie. And it wasn't but about oh five or six weeks after she come to me and she said, "Oh, pastor." I've made a mistake. I said, what have you made a mistake about? She said, the man that was in the counseling room and the man I'm living with is not the same person. Because I cover areas. If I'm, I don't do it now, but I covered areas that a lot of people don't want to talk about. Yeah, we'd talk about sex. You were just wondering, did you talk about sex? Yeah, we did. <laughs> About any kind of way you want to talk about, because being a counselor, there's nothing that you can surprise me with anymore. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I used to sit there sometimes, and I know my eyes would, because I'm hearing it the first time we do this, or we do that, we do this, or I believe this, and I believe that. And boy, I mean, <laughs> this is not my notes. But, you know, I sit there and I'm listening. And I'm hearing things that people do that I had no clue they did them. Y'all are getting real quiet now. I ain't going to tell you what it was. I just will not do that. So you can just keep looking at me like this. I'm not going there. Uh, And I'd come home and I wouldn't even tell her because I didn't want her to know how bad things people think. You know, sometimes people think and, and, and not only think, but you know, But anyway, I'd find out things, and then sometimes, see, in it, when the people were authentic, 
when they were authentic, sometimes the different ones could find out issues beforehand that they had to deal with if they're going to go on down that course. Where this gentleman that I was talking about earlier just lied through his whole way. And so after about five or six weeks, the real true person began to come out. And when the true person, and, and you know, he was angry, he was mean, and, and all kinds of things. And so eventually, you know, they, they, they separated and went their own ways. But see, again, how many marriages are in the divorce courts or people have been divorced because you didn't get who you think you was getting? You got kind of like a, what was that guy's name? Like a buck, it's like a buck of chocolate. Yeah. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, that was a cute movie, wasn't it? Wow. Yes. So sometimes people are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> oh, y'all are so much fun today. Wow. <laughs> Well, why don't we just get go? You got any chocolate? No. Um, uh, let me just kind of take another little side trip. I've been on one all morning. So, anyway, I believe it's important for. I, I want to take a side trip and say this too about medicine and doctors, and because sometimes in faith teaching, some people think that going to doctors is not. A good thing, or taking medicine is not a good thing. I have not read that in my Bible. Amen. I have not read that in my Bible, and the Bible is our roadmap, and it's what we go by. It's not by what somebody thinks. Yeah. And so, you know, when you you are walking in faith, I just mentioned how uh, uh, COVID stopped, and and uh, uh, sometimes something stops in your lungs or somewhere in your body. Sometimes uh, the doctor tells you you have cancer. Well, you didn't ask for any of those things. Amen. They just showed up. Amen. So what I'm saying is, it's I believe it's good for faith people yeah. to go and get annual checkups. Yeah. Thank you for shouting me down. <laughs> I know the audience in, the, in, uh, in, in Internet land just heard all of your shouts. <laughs> it doesn't prove you have more faith or you're more spiritual if you don't go to the doctor. Amen. I'm honest with you. I go every year for a physical. My wife goes every year for a physical. And I'm not less spiritual I'm not less spiritual. I don't have less faith because I go. See, I, I personally believe this. I believe that God uses doctors today. I believe God uses men I do believe, and women. I believe God uses medicine to help us. Satan will try any way he can, though, to get a loophole to get you sidetracked thinking it's wrong for you to go to the doctor or you don't have faith if you don't. You know, Brother Hagin said he didn't take an aspirin for so many years. Well, that was Brother Hagin. That wasn't you. That's right. Amen? Amen. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, sometimes people have pain. Sometimes people will have pain. <laughs> Sometimes people will have pain. Amen. <laughs> pain is a symptom that something's wrong. Amen. Can I say that again? Yes. Well, you already know it, so I won't need to say it again. <laughs> but pain is a symptom something needs to be fixed. Yes. So if you've got pain and you prayed and you're not seeing results, Why not go find out what's causing the pain? Because you may get there and you may be, your body may have gone too far to retrace mm -hmm. what the doctors found out. Mm -hmm. And your faith cannot catch up yeah. to what you just heard the doctor say. Uh. 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 
Now don't, now don't shut me down again. But I'm telling you, sometimes people, they don't realize what I just said. You're, when you hear this and you've gone a long time and you could have gone earlier and you could have found out earlier, but again, you're trying to be this faith person, but all at once when you get the news, you're so far behind what you just heard, trying to catch up many times does not work. Now then, you can say amen. Amen. (laughs) It's not a lack of faith to use medicine and use your faith at the same time. Somebody said, I just can't do that. I got to do one or the other. No, you don't. No, you don't. You know, I, I, I know lots of people today that has been diabetic and even took the needle. But today... They're, they're no longer needing any medicine for diabetes because of healing. But they, they would inject themselves with the, um, what do you call it? Insulin. They would inject themselves with the insulin, but every time they would, they'd say, in Jesus' name, my pancreas is working exactly like it's supposed to work instead of this insulin doing it. Father, as I put this insulin in my body, I believe my pancreas is working normal and doing what it's supposed to do. I've known a lot of people that was healed. So I still believe in healing. I was in Buffalo, New York, in the Klein Hans Music Hall. And we had a huge crowd, and this is a, one of the most beautiful convention centers. It seats thousands of people. It was there, and it was a Sunday afternoon. I'd been there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. We used to go to Buffalo, New York all the time. And uh, I remember on a Sunday afternoon, a gentleman, they, they helped him down to the front. And... Uh, he had had a stroke, and his whole side was paralyzed, and it took a while to get him there. Well, while I was praying for him, while I was praying for him, the anointing came on me, and I, I, I sensed the gift of faith. Now, what is the gift of faith? The gift of faith is beyond your faith. I want to say that again. The gift of faith. It's a gift. You don't, you don't have to stand in faith. The gift of faith comes in and it does the work. Yes. Yes. And this gentleman was there before me and I just knew. I said, you're healed. You're, you're made whole from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I said, I know it. Yes. And he walked away the same way. Well, you know, I said to him, I don't know why your body is not, I don't know why your body is not doing what it's supposed to do, but you're healed. And he looked up at me and he still couldn't talk well. And he said, I believe, I believe, you know, who's trying to say, I believe. Well, he walked back to his seat. So I gave him my phone number and I said, you call me. And I don't normally do this, especially when we were having thousands of people. I said, you call me because I know you're healed. It was two weeks later. Two weeks later. He called me. He said, this is, told me his name, and I, I, I wrote it down so I'd remember. And he said, I want you to know, about 10 minutes ago, I was sitting, and something happened in the top of my head And it felt like somebody was pouring oil on me. He said, nobody was there, but I was sitting in my chair. And he said, as it went down, he said, it came on through my face. And he said, my face started loosening up. My tongue started loosening up. And then my shoulder, then my body. And he said, I can speak plain. I can talk to you. I can move my hands. I can get up and walk. I can do anything. Now, why it took the two weeks? I don't know. But I'm telling you, he stood in faith. I was in faith. Sometimes it happens that way, but it was a gift of faith that I knew that operated. And so I just knew. And so I told him it's going to happen. You know, now I don't do things like that unless it's the anointing of the Holy Ghost and a gift from God. When God puts a gift in there, you don't even have to have faith. 
Now, there again, you're shouting me down. <laughs> See, why do you think the nine gifts of the Spirit are in the Bible? They're there to do the supernatural. Where our faith sometimes walking it out, sometimes walking it out and going to the doctor and getting the report. You know, you're going and you want to know what the doctor's going to say. Because you want to know what the doctor's going to say. I mean, you know, who wouldn't want to know what the doctor's going to say? But, you know, you, you go in and what he says, you have to believe the report of the Lord more than his report. His report may be accurate, but it may not be accurate. Amen. 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 Somebody help me out here. Amen. Now I said last week, and I want to say it again. Yeah. I've never been bothered with being bipolar, mm. a manic depressive, mm. a, a schiz schizophrenia, mm -hmm. or any other mental illness. And I've talked about this so many times that I don't want to wear you out. But when you use the word mental illness, that's broad, mm. and it's not bad. There again, you're shouting me down. <laughs> no, I know you're listening. I know you're listening. I'm just having fun this morning. But again, see, mental illness, people categorize that sometimes as a person that doesn't have any cognancy at all. Sometimes. But that's not true, folks. That's just not true. So this is what's put a shame on people being authentic when they're having a, a, a bipolar situation or schizophrenia or, or whatever it may be. It is mental illness that something's wrong. But again, <clears throat> why is that shameful and a cancer is not? Shouldn't be. Not with me. Doesn't matter to me when somebody comes and tells me something. I may be surprised at what they tell me, <clears throat> but when they tell me, I'm not going to let it affect how I treat them. Amen? Amen. See, I, <clears throat> I've never had to deal with lust, desiring the same sex, Abusing alcohol, pills, tobacco, and drugs. And I said this last week, but again, I'm, I don't have the same things bothering me that other people have. Yeah. So how can I get up and criticize? Yeah. Now, I'm not approving any of this and saying it's okay to do it. Yeah. I'm just saying some people are bothered. You know, we, we had a long talk this week. Uh, I think TJ and David... And Pastor Sharon and myself, and we were talking about this subject, and I was talking to some person that that's you know they they <clears throat> do homosexual acts, and not them we were not, but anyway we had we were discussing the whole situation. That person had told me they were born that way. Well, you know, I have a hard time with someone that tells me they were born to be bisexual or they were born to be homosexual or they were born to be, if they're a male, they were born to be a female or they were supposed to be a male if they were a female. See, I have a hard time with that. Yeah, I know people that do it. I know people that do it. I know people that, that do all kinds. And I'm not saying it's okay, but I'm just saying that I've never been bothered by what somebody else has been bothered with. So when I see someone else bothered, it depends whether they want. See, so you can be tempted with something, but if you don't give expression to it. Hello. Amen. See, I had a gentleman come to me one time and he said, you know, I, I, I don't know what it is, but he said, I have a desire uh, to be around males all the time. I just want to be with males. I don't want to be around a female. But he said, I don't want this feeling. Well, he was honest. He was being authentic. He said, I've never gone. I've never, I've never uh, given in to this feeling. 
and I want delivered from it. I, I, want to, I want to be around females. That's what I was born to be. I was born to be around and connect. If I'm going to get married, get married to a female, not a male. Ooh. Boy, am I stirring up some ground this morning. Wow. I don't know who's listening, but I'm telling you one thing. I mean, this is stuff we don't talk about in church a lot. Amen? But see, because someone else is tempted with being with the opposite sex or something, doesn't necessarily mean we need to say, hey, you're that. We need to try to understand them and try to help them rather than criticize them. Because, folks, I know people that have been delivered. Amen. Just, just, you know, when, when we were in, I'm, I'm sorry for all this, not, not I'm sorry for the stories, the stories are fitting in, but uh, we were young and, uh, you know, we was poor, we had a tent, and, you know, we just went from city to city. And this kid came in, and when he came in, um, I mean, you could tell, you could tell what lifestyle he lived. He acted very feminine, spoke feminine, but he came down and wept vehemently at the altar and said, I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. And he must have been about 17 or 18 at the time. I'm not sure, but somewhere 19. And... Uh, maybe 19, because he had had a, a rough life already. And he said, I'm so tormented by the devil. I get up at, at night and I'll just go and find a man somewhere and have, a, have a, a sexual relationship with a man. And he said, I'm tired of this. But he was so feminine. I'm thinking, wow. But anyway, you know what we did? <laughs> I let him travel with me. You say, you did? I did. And I remember, um, I said to him, I said, now, if you really want delivered, you got to follow instructions. We got to pray together. You got to read together because you got to change your mind. Yes. Well, one night he slipped out and messed up and come back. But he told me, he said, I messed up. Well, you know what? He was real. He told me he messed up. I said, how do you feel? He said, I feel like I, I, I've been in the mud with pigs. I said, well, that lets me know you don't really want that lifestyle. I said, you stick with me. And so we did. And he stayed with us a couple of years and got on his feet and began to work and stayed in touch with our ministry and later was called into the ministry and he keeps in touch with me today. He's got five kids, grandkids, has been all over the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, been to China over 50 times, going into areas in China where no one else can get in, and he goes and meets with small groups and preaches to them, and it's amazing uh, what God has done in his life. So God can deliver a person if they want to be delivered. Yes, Amen? Amen? This doesn't make me better than someone else that's been tempted dealing with the issues. But what a person has to do is to be honest and say, I need your help. Yes. Yes. A person with any issue, a person with any issue must want help and ask for help before God can help them or send someone else to help them. Yes. And I pray, everyone here at ELC, I really pray that we'll be honest, we'll be real, we'll be authentic <laughs> this year. And if you have an issue, don't keep covering it. Yes. Don't keep covering it. If someone asks you and you're having a problem, if someone asks you how you are and you're having a problem, I think I've talked about this a little bit before. 
But too many times we want to pretend everything is okay. I mean, it's all right to say, well, I need a prayer today. I need, I need a, an agreement today if it's the right person. But you still, if you're, if, you're, if you're in the valley, don't try to pretend you're on the mountain. I'm not saying, oh, I'm in a valley. It's so bad. It's so hard. I can't make it. No, just be real and say, this is one of the days I'm walking by faith. I think, I, I think I'd appreciate that more than you pretending you're all right and then you go out and cry two buckets full. Yes. And I see people do that all the time. They're just so I'm hyper and saying, wanting to impress you how, how well they're doing. And then all at once, all at once, you know, they go away and they're crying, crying and crying and crying. I'm not saying it's not okay to cry, but why didn't you tell somebody? Maybe they could have helped you through it. Amen. See, the three Hebrew children didn't get delivered from the fire, but they got delivered in the fire. Yes. Yes. Daniel didn't get d delivered from the den of lions. He got delivered in the den of lions. So we need to realize that you said, well, that's Old Testament. I know it's Old Testament, but Peter didn't get delivered from jail. Yes. He did one time, but other times he was in jail. But one time he got delivered in jail, but he didn't get delivered from not going. He got delivered in jail. Mm -hmm. Paul and Silas didn't get delivered from the jail. They got delivered in the jail. Yes. I could go on and on yeah. telling you New Testament situations where people didn't get delivered from it, but they got delivered going through it. Yeah. You know, just like Joseph. Uh, Joseph, I mean, how in the world could anybody go through what he went through? How could they do that? Just a kid around 17 years of age when his brothers did all of this to him. And then he wound up in Egypt on the, on the, he was on the slave block being auctioned off. Well, in his heart, he says, I'm not a slave. I'm not a slave. Amen. Amen. See, again, no matter what happens to us, this is why I say it constantly. Let's not let it happen in us. Amen. See, Joseph did not let what happened to him happen in him. And when he was standing on the, on the stage of the, the, the auction block, and he was being auctioned off as a slave, and Potiphar bought him, he, was being, he had to walk and go back to Potiphar's house, but he didn't go back in his heart as a slave. He went back as a worker. He went back as a server. And what happened? He got promoted. But after he got promoted, then we know what happened with Potiphar's wife. She had lust for him and, and tried to get him to have sex with her. But she sa he said, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. So she tore his clothes and started yelling, probably was saying, he's trying to rape me. But you know what? He went to prison. He didn't deserve to be in prison. But God delivered him in the prison. Yes. And what did happen? And one day he went from the pit to the palace. Yes. One day from no sheets to satin sheets. Yes. Ooh, somebody say thank you, Jesus. Yes. See, I pray in 2022 we will all have more of a heart of love and compassion. Yes. Understanding and forgiving, patient, kind, Empty ourselves of pride, yes. selfishness, being rude, yes. short-tempered, short yes. being more thankful, yes. show appreciation for those who have helped you and are kind, and show gratitude. Yes. Did you know gratitude to others is one of the most short-lived things in the world? So that's why we need to continually ourselves show gratitude. Yes. And I pray here at ELC, that's 
we'll have that. See, gratitude comes from a spirit and a nature of giving. Yes. And, and you don't have to act like you're something. Just be natural to compliment someone. You know what? If, 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 if they're ugly, <laughs> you don't have to say they're ugly. And you don't have to say they're pretty. You can say, that sure is nice earrings you got on there. Or, or that sure is, the, I like the way you've done your hair. I like that shirt you got on. I like that jacket you got on. You know, there's ways to give compliments if a person's not got what it takes. Amen? Amen. Amen. We all sometimes have that problem. Well, I'll say, I have that problem. I won't put you in there with me. But sometimes, sometimes you can just compliment my, 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 my suit and I'll be happy. No, you don't have to compliment nothing. The only point is, don't lie to me. Yes. Don't try to make me believe something that I already know is not true. Yes. Have you ever been around them kind of people? They're always trying to just build you up and build you up and build you up and build you up. Whew, where am I going today? And you know all the time they're just telling you stuff they think you want to hear and you know all along they're just saying stuff. Goodness. I, I just got to think maybe I need to, to, to start closing this. Let me say this before I do. I can give you scriptures, preach about all of these things that I'm talking about but it's up to you of what you're going to do about it. It's up to you. Just bear with me for a moment. The question that needs to be asked is why is authenticity so important to, in our journey? I'll tell you why. Because every human being longs to be known and loved as we truly are. The good, the bad, sometimes the ugly, the highs, the lows, all of it to be unconditionally loved in a conditional world. This is why a relationship with Jesus is so important. I want to be loved but I know that I'm loved by Jesus. So if I'm not loved and accepted by someone else, I've come to the place that I can live with myself. I can't please everybody, and everybody's not going to like me, and everybody's not going to listen to me. But you know what? The ones that do, I'm going to do my best to help and encourage people to do the right thing. Yes. I got so much today. Just bear with me a moment. Sometimes it's hard to confess something you're dealing with because you may be fearful of what someone would say. Maybe something's happened to you. Maybe you've lost a loved one and you're, and I, and I think, let me go back and, and when our son was killed, it was a time in the 80s when the faith movement was so high and it was like not, nobody had any problems. I mean, there was, it's not true we didn't have problems, but it wasn't supposed to happen. Uh, uh, because I was on the platform and speaking in conferences everywhere with all of these great men of God and women of God. But when our son got killed, that wasn't supposed to happen. Well, you know, I had people say some of the dumbest things to me. You just didn't have any faith. I mean, I, we had them say all kinds of dumb things to us. I mean, it... it, it but I didn't get mad at anybody, didn't get bothered at anybody. But what I'm saying is, it hurt when somebody said, why don't you just act like he's on vacation? 
I remember one of our real close friends says, well, you know what, I've been praying for you, so y'all just start acting like he's on vacation. Just go about your business. Well, I mean, here I am sitting, she's sitting there, we're hurting, and then somebody's telling me I'm supposed to be okay emotionally because our son was just killed. And folks, I believe in faith, and if anybody's doubting me whatsoever, I'm just trying to say we've tried to cover up saying we're in faith when if that person would have said to me, I don't know what it's like to lose your child. And so I may say the wrong things. I may not say what I need to say, but we love you and we care for you. And how can I pray for you? Mm-hmm. See, instead of saying dumb things mm-hmm. and see... That's one thing I never tell a person. I know how you feel. Yes. I don't care. You know, if, if a person's spouse passes, I don't have the same understanding by their spouse passing that I do of a child passing. So you can't put them, or even if somebody else, their son or daughter has been killed, you don't have the same thing. And see, here's, here's something that I probably have never said before, but I saw a lady uh, that her husband just passed, uh, Mike Hankins, um, uh, that I mentioned here, just, just over in Rockwall. Great man of God that just passed just three or four weeks ago. But I happened to just be looking a little bit. I didn't look, but just a minute. And her page comes up, and she said, Here I am in the mall walking through the mall and seeing all these people happy and I'm so hurting inside. I got all this pain on the inside and she went on to explain how this one was doing that and this one was doing this and they had no idea of how much pain I'm in. She said, it made me realize how many times have I been that person that I didn't know the person beside me was in a well so deep they felt like they couldn't get out. That may not have been her exact words, but it means the same thing with what she was saying. And see, we don't know sometimes when we're in church who we're sitting by that we think we know and we don't know what they've been through that week. Amen? Amen. And I remember I remember this well when we, 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 after we had gone to the burial and we're driving back in, in the big hearse and we're driving back to the funeral home to get our car. I remember getting in their car and driving down the road and we seeing everybody being festive and then everybody came to our house and everybody was festive in our house laughing and having a great time. Uh, we probably had 40 people in there. I don't know or more and food had been catered in by my neighbor and uh, they were just all having a good time, but even though we were smiling, even though we were being nice, you know, inside it didn't stop our feelings. So I, I just want to say, I, I'm not near through here today, but uh, perhaps you've tried to admit these things before to someone, but each time you retreat back into silence because you can't bear the idea of anyone knowing that you've ever in, entertained a thought maybe that was the best thought. We've all entertained thoughts that were foolish. Can I hear an amen? Amen. Now let me just finish with this. The word false. The Bible tells us in James in James chapter 5 and 16 he said confess your faults one with another. That necessarily doesn't mean just go and confess your sins to somebody because we confess our sins to Jesus. Amen. Amen. But he said, confess your faults. And that word faults, coming from the Greek, describes a falling in some area of one's life. So if you had a sickness, there's been a falling in your life. If you've got a problem in your head, there's been a falling in your body somehow. So it doesn't necessarily mean sin. It says that that word describes falling in some area of one's life. That family may be an actual falling into it, or, or it may be falling into sin, or it may be a tripping up in a way that Satan wants to get you in the wrong direction. Either way, the word refers to a person who has fallen, failed, erred, or made some kind of mistake. So 
if you if you have erred by having a problem and not admitting the problem to get help, then you're falling in a different direction. But he wants us to find someone that we can pray. Now, I'm, I'm repeating this probably 50 times. Find someone that we can trust and say, let's pray together. Amen. And then you come along and just like we did with this young man. I knew I risk no telling what my reputation and everything else when I brought this young man in to travel with me for two years. Oh, I didn't have him on the platform. Don't misunderstand me. I didn't have him on the platform, but I had him working in the tent. I had him doing all kinds of things and being around someone that was godly. And what he said was, my dad walked out of, his, out of my life when I was just two years old. My mother didn't, didn't have any form of... of um, this gentleman that I was talking about earlier, she said, my dad walked out of our life and my mother didn't have any form of, of reality or what life was like and everything was in, in turmoil all the time. And he said, so I found, I found life somewhere else, but I found it in the wrong places. Father, we thank you today for your goodness, for your love and for your mercy. And I pray, Lord, these words, even though I just followed my heart today in speaking, I pray that some way and somehow you'll touch every person that's dealing with an issue, whatever that issue may be. God, I just ask that some way and somehow they will not allow Satan to torment their mind and their thoughts and keep them in a deep, dark cave but find a place where they can go and say, I'm struggling. I'm struggling and I need help. I need prayer. I need someone to stand by my side and walk me through this. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, um, I'm a person that when it comes to doing some things, I need you to show me how to do it. I can read and sometimes it doesn't, doesn't register. But if you show me, I got it. My son David would say, Dad, just go to Google and ask Google. <laughs> All kinds of stuff, you know, on the computer that needs to be done. Keep, save him a trip. He said, just go to Google and look at Google. Well, sometimes I read it, and, and you know, 80% of the time, but then there's, there's the other, I read that, and I read it, and I look at it, and I try it, and I work, and it just doesn't work for me. But he'll come over, and he'll do it. I say, oh, yeah, that's how it works. I see that. And, you know, I was, uh, when I was piloting, I've got thousands of hours of sitting in an airplane flying as the captain and as the co-captain. Co captain or the co pilot. I've got thousands and thousands of hours and I've landed in many places of the world. Big aircraft, I've landed them and, and, and you know, I've come through traffic and, you know, in one of the places you it, going flying into Chicago, that was always a, that was always a, a big place, probably Dallas now, but used to Chicago was an interesting place to listen to all of the things we're listening to. And all the different planes and all the instructions. And, you know, you have to be ready when they call 5051 Echo. They don't say, hey, Don Clowers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they say 5051 Echo, turn right to your head, and it is so fast. Wow. I mean, you, you have to get it. Well, I always, I, I learned the radio. I learned everything. And I did well. But I was not an instructor. Mm. I was a pilot. I was not an instructor of pilots. Somebody instructed me, but there was no way was I going to try to become an instructor in how to be a pilot because that's just not my thing. How many understand? I'm called to do what I'm doing. I'm doing what I feel like I believe God has put me in. Satan is fighting me in doing what I'm doing Sometimes it appears even greater when we were doing the big. 
But here's the catch. Sometimes, and you, you need to listen to this one very carefully, sometimes when it seems like you're moving slow, you have less momentum than it, you, 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 when, when you're moving slow, you really have more momentum, momentum going than it looks. But because you're in that stage, it doesn't look like you've got momentum. And see, that's what Satan would want to tell me sometimes. Don't, you just don't have any momentum. Because when something breaks or something happens, you're stuck. Well, I'm not stuck today. That's right. That's right. I did, did, did we get stuck today? Yeah. No, I didn't let the devil stick me today and say, you, you can't go on. Well, I, we decided to go on anyway. Yeah. And so when you're going big and everything's looking great, you may have and look better than you really are. Mm. Hello? You know how many times, and again, I don't say this to bash anybody, but how many times have you seen somebody that you admire on television and everything, and they got all this momentum going, and, and for two years they've been having an affair or something. And then it comes out. And then you think, well, they had the momentum, so the momentum caused them to look better than they really are. Well, many times a lack of momentum causes you not to look as good as you are. Mm -hmm. So I'll close with that one for sure. Wow. Would you stand on your feet with me, everybody? Mm -hmm. Now, Father, we're just so grateful yes. for every person that's a part of this service today. Yes. And we just ask, Holy Spirit, yes. that you will help them that needs to find someone to talk to. Yes. They will find the right one yes. that will have compassion yes. and understanding. Yes. Help them to have compassion and understanding yes. and find their way through. Yes. God, let 22, 2022 be a year that we everyone will be real and authentic in our life so that we can be a light and example to someone else. We don't want to be what we're not. We want to be who you want us to be. Now, I'm going to pray this prayer for those that have never made Jesus Lord of our life. We have people all the time telling me, I prayed that prayer with you when you prayed the prayer and came to Jesus. Dear Lord, I come to you. I repent of my sins. Forgive me of all my wrong. Help me in my thinking to think the right thoughts, to say the right words, have right actions. I want to be more like Christ in 2022. Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. Amen. 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 Uh, Grace Yellow just reminded me that we didn't receive our offering, our tithe and offering. So if you want to give some tithe and offering today, just find your cell phone down here. Just bring it on down. And uh, again, as I said last week, we, we gave money. We, we don't have the pictures yet, but maybe by next Sunday we'll have pictures of the generators and the tin roofs that we bought for people over in the Philippines that's having such a hard time. So you that are watching by Internet, uh, we would appreciate your support. There again, there's the page you can go to, EL Global. You'll see that particular part on our page and just click on there where it says Give. And... Uh, We'll certainly appreciate it. Well, did you get blessed today? Yeah. Did you really get blessed? All right. Well, God bless you and our TV audience or our internet audience. You have a great and wonderful day. And you here?